Sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value are all important for assessing the accuracy and performance of diagnostic tests. For example, this COVID test kit. In general, the goal of diagnostic tests are simple and straightforward. If someone has the disease or the thing of interest, we want it to come out positive. If the person doesn't have the disease or thing of interest, then we expect it to come out negative. These four things help us assess that. I have a video covering sensitivity and specificity, so I will not cover these two concepts in detail in this video. The PPV of a test tells us the probability that a person who tested positive actually has the disease. This is good because it can possibly filter out any false positives. It does this by taking into consideration the disease prevalence in the population. Prevalence is the proportion of people in a population who already have a disease at a specific point in time. This prevalence represents the general population before we even start testing with our diagnostic test. So when we say a disease is more prevalent in a certain population, it means a lot of people have the disease. The MPV of a test tells us the probability that a person who tested negative actually does not have the disease. This is also determined based on the prevalence of the disease. Let's assume we want to test for COVID using our new COVID test kits in these three states, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Before our testing even begins, we check out the COVID prevalence in these three states. The combined population is 10,000 with a 5% COVID prevalence, which we will categorize as low. Also, here is the sensitivity and specificity of the COVID test. Now, based on the information given, we will follow some steps that will ultimately help us calculate the PPV and NPV. First, let's determine how many actual cases and non-cases. So 5% prevalence of 10,000 people in the population have COVID already. If you do the math, you should get 500 people who have confirmed to have COVID and 9,500 that do not. In this case, we already know the sensitivity and specificity of this COVID test. These percentages tell us something about the accuracy of the COVID test if we would use it in the general population. Now let's see exactly what it's telling us. In sensitivity, we only care about people with the known disease as per the population prevalence. In this scenario, we know that 500 people have COVID. A 95% sensitivity on a diagnostic test means that it's able to correctly identify 95% of the actual cases as positive. So 95% of 500 is 475, and these are known as true positives, meaning that they already have the disease and our new diagnostic test was able to confirm it. The remaining 5% of the COVID cases will be 25, which are false negatives, right? Again, we know that these people have COVID, but the test is coming out negative for them. So false negatives. Now in specificity, we only care about people who do not have the disease as per the population prevalence. In this scenario, we know that 9,500 people do not have the disease. A 90% specificity on a diagnostic test means that it's able to correctly identify 90% of the non-cases as negative. So 90% of 9,500 is 8,550, and these are the true negatives. The other remaining 10% percent of the non-cases will be 950, which are also false positives. Based off the information we have now, we can build a 2 by 2 table and plug in these numbers and then we will discuss how to calculate the PPV and the NPV. There were 475 people who had COVID and the test was able to identify and come out positive, true positives. 25 people who have COVID, but the test came out negative, false negatives. There were 8,550 people without the disease and the test came out negative, so true negatives. And 950 people without the disease, but the test resulted positive, so false positives. Calculating the PPV helps us determine whether a positive test is truly meaningful. To calculate the PPV, we take the true positives and divide it by the total of the true positives and the false positives. The PPV includes the true positives from the sick group and false positives from the healthy group. So in this case, it's 475 divided by 475 plus 950. If you do the math, you should get 0.33 or 33%. So we interpret this as... 33% or 157 of the people who tested positive actually have the disease. 
we would need a confirmatory test or clinical judgment before diagnosing or treating based off this results. In populations with a high prevalence of the disease, the PPV will increase because more people actually have the disease. If the disease prevalence is low, then the positives that we get from the diagnostic test should be taken with a grain of salt because they are most likely false positives from healthy individuals. Okay, now let's calculate the NPV. To calculate that, we take the true negatives and divide it by the total of the true negatives and the false negatives. In this case, that's 8,550 divided by 8,550 plus 25, we get 0.99 or 99%. We would interpret this as 99% or 8,550 of the people who tested negative do not have this disease. The NPV is so high in this case because within the population, if there is low prevalence of the disease, most people won't have the disease anyway. So a negative result in this case is almost always correct. Now you see why we take into consideration the prevalence when calculating the PPV and the NPV, which further helps us evaluate the accuracy of our diagnostic test. Hopefully I was able to clarify this concept for you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video and take care. Yeah.